Thank you. We're all set. Go ahead, Lynn. Good morning. Good evening. It's January 18th, 2022. And pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Given that we have a quorum of the Town Services and Outreach Committee present, I am calling the January 18, 2022 meeting of the committee to order at 6.03 p.m. I will call upon each committee member by name. At that time, you should unmute your mic and say present. This will indicate that you can hear us and we can hear you. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Shalini Balmill. Yes. Anna Devlin Gothier. Present. Anika Lopes. Present. Dorothy Pam. Present. Andy Steinberg. Present. There's no chat room for this meeting. If you have technical issues, please let the chair or the minute taker know to make and to make a comment or ask a question. Please use the raise hand button. If technical difficulties arise as a result of utilizing remote participation, the chair will decide how to address the situation. Discussion may have to be suspended and there will be a note in the minutes. We're going to move immediately to the election of the chair. And so the floor is open for nominations. Shalini Baumel. I'd like to nominate Dorothy Pan as the chair. Dorothy, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do, unless someone has had a change of heart and puts themselves forward. Are there any other volunteers or nominations? Okay. I second Dorothy. Okay. Then uh, let's go through the roll call and have a vote. And that would be starting with um, Shalini Baumel. Yes. Anna Devlin Gothier. Yes, Dorothy Pam. Anika Lopes. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Dorothy Pam. Andy yes. Steinberg. Uh, Dorothy. Thank you. Uh, that is unanimous. I'm going to now turn the um, gavel, if you will, over to the vice chair. I am I am going to hang around for a bit of the meeting if there's questions or additional issues that I can be helpful with. Otherwise, um, go for it. Well, I guess we should open the floor for nominations for the vice chair of the committee. Okay, Anna. I would like to nominate Shalini Balmilne for vice chair of TSO. Uh, are there any other nominations? Okay, uh, Shalini, do you accept the nomination? I do if there's no one else who is excited about it. <laughs> we are all gonna work on this together. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm nominating all of us as the, as the vice chairs. Okay, good. Mm. So let's have a vote and uh, I don't have a, a, I'll just go on the order of what's on my screen in front of me. Um, Anna, how do you vote? I vote for Shalini Balmo. Okay. And Dorothy Pam votes yes. And uh, Anika? Yes. Yes. And Shalini? Yes. And Andy? And Andy? Yes. And I vote for Shalini. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Well, welcome, Shalini. Um, Thank you. So we have a lot of things before us. Um, and I think that the most important one is setting up a meeting time first. And um, so what I'm gonna ask is, um, uh, Lynn has done some pre-thinking, uh, which I find helpful, but uh, in terms of thinking of the cycle of when um, agendas have to be posted and when our reports have to be sent in to the town council. And so she has suggested uh, the Tuesday before a town council meeting. And we know that sometimes we have town council meetings two in a row because that's just how it turns out. But the real question is, um, first of all, does somebody have a um, conflict on Tuesdays, day or evening? 
I do it tip. Oh, sorry. I forgot no, all ahead. the rules. Go ahead, but Anna. Just, that's just a uh, I do. Yeah, I, I'm really trying to preserve my my workday hours um, from I, I typically work between 830 and 430. I can wiggle it a little bit, but I'm already asking a lot. So I'd, I'd prefer to try to avoid those as much as possible. OK, um, there anybody else who works during the daytime? As I always think this semester, Annika, Anika, sorry. I do, I do as well. I mean, I, I really work both day and evenings, but evenings tend to be a little more flexible. Okay. All right. So now we get to the evenings and we actually have two members of the committee. Andy who, has his hand up. Oh, Andy, I'm sorry, Andy, please. I mean, I, the problem that I have too is that um, the other committee that I'm on is finance, and I suspect that we also are going to end up having to meet in the evenings for similar reasons that were just expressed. And as a right. consequence, if, if that turns out to be correct, I, you know, I just don't know how that conversation is going to flow tomorrow morning. Uh, well, also, Andy, now that I'm thinking about this, um, I don't think it's fair for you to have the finance committee meeting and your other committee meeting on the same day, um, because I know what you do for the finance committee. So I, I think, I, you know, anyone speak up at any time, but I'm, it's looking to me like Tuesday might not work. So if we talk about evenings, we could do Monday night, the week there is no town council. We could do Wednesday night, which conflicts with the planning board. Mm -hmm. Thursday has got about five other meetings. So we have a problem um, and I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, we could do a five o'clock meeting, but I, I'm thinking that, that I think and Tuesday, I'm feeling that Tuesday is really out for Andy, but what do you think Andy? Well, um, what I was thinking about um, is that the way we worked it with, um, and you were the one who was on two committees and met on Tuesdays last time at conflicting mm -hmm. times, is uh, it was the CRC that was the meeting. Right. And what we um, ended up working out with um, the chair of CRC at the time was mm -hmm. that alternating weeks would be um, one committee or the other, yeah. and that we set up a schedule with the two committees together to do that. Okay. And then mm -hmm. we were able to, um, so that there was a meeting every Tuesday, but it was the alternating committee. And um, the way we had set it up was that uh, it, it sort of worked out that sometimes you got the benefit of being the day after the council meeting and council, having yep. more time and at times it turned out the other way, but it was yep. a matter of the tricks of the calendar more than design. Um, so I would suggest that uh, if we agree on Tuesday that we not fix the evening until we have a committee chair for a finance committee, right. okay. have that person talk with Dorothy and figure it and figure it out if there's a problem and if we can work out such a schedule. Also, I have a problem with um, evenings because CRC is flexible to do it in the afternoon. However, the CRC committee felt that CRC is a very uh, publicly in demand kind of committee. So they were trying to have that one in the evening. And then if that's in the evening, then I cannot afford to have another because I work in the evenings. Most of my classes are in the evenings, mm -hmm. so I can't give up another evening. So um, if we find that people working here just cannot do it in afternoon or morning, then I will have to go back to the CRC and say that, okay, that one has to be then in the morning or afternoon. Can I suggest that given this, that you set a meeting, your next meeting date for February 1st and decide whether it should be six or 6.30 and that we then take it from there. And once all the chairs mm -hmm. have been elected, we'll figure this out, okay? Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think that, that it's pretty clear Anna works five days a week and she works in the daytime. 
Mm. Um, that's, you know, we have to, we have to work around that. Uh, alternating uh, Tuesdays could work. Um, CRC often has its forums on an evening meeting, but it's regular meetings in the afternoon. So it, 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 there's possibly, it's not gonna be easy. Okay, it's not mm. gonna be easy. But I would say email me with uh, any thoughts you have on this, because um, I know that you have uh, evening classes. Um, this semester, I don't have any HCC classes, so I have more flexibility than I usually do, so uh, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so any other thoughts that you have on that? Um, you can speak them now, anybody? Yeah. Uh, I had my hand up. Uh, yes. CRC did a doodle poll and the finance committee did a doodle poll. And what we did was uh, the poll is, I didn't set up the poll actually. It was Sean Bengana uh, who set it up as our, who's our staff person of finance. And he had times of days, days of week and um, asked, you know, the usual question. Mm -hmm. Yes, if necessary or absolutely no. And uh, that's information that I was basing it on. Plus, we have one member who works in, uh, during the day in, uh, on finance, which is what the problem is, too. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, it's a question if we want to do a doodle poll like two of the other committees, CRC and finance, and thought we can do that now. Um, and then, uh, but come back on February 1st. And that was a good suggestion. Just pick a date. Right. So we can do that, but I don't want to do that until the other committees mm. have uh, made their decisions from their doodle polls so that people know when their committees are meeting. Uh, when do you think those other committees will have the results of their polls? Um, we're meeting on the 27th. The CRC is meeting on the 27th. Mm -hmm. And Andy, when is finance going to meet? Finance might have it tomorrow because the Doodle poll was done in advance of the okay. first meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're down to meet on February 1st, but if we, if, and, and, and I, somebody will have to create the doodle poll. I'm I happy did. to do that. Oh, Anna, thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, Absolutely. Okay, so Shalini, what you were saying with CRC, I recognize what you're saying is that, and I remembered some of the feedback CRC got is that it was challenging to make those times because it was at like 2 p.m. or something. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that technically you all could meet during the day. It's yeah. just that you'd rather meet at the night in the night. Okay, thank you. I just wanted yeah. to make sure I fully understood the, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we could then do a doodle and poll. Paul, oh, has Paul please. Up. So might five o'clock be an option for this committee? I mean, that might be sort of, it's not daytime, it's not evening, but it might be the worst time also. So just if you want to do a doodle, throw that in that list too. Well, my okay. classes are generally six onwards, so I need I to see. be done by six. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah, so Dorothy, I'll, I'll make a doodle and send it to you and you can decide when to send it out or what edits are needed, but that way it'll be ready to go right. to you. Okay. You, and I'll probably check it with uh, Lynn and um, uh, Paul just to see of course. what their ideas, because I think that'll be good. Okay, that'll be great. Um, so it, it is hard, particularly public access. That, that's part of the question with CRC, uh, is the public access. What time um, do you want to meet on February 1st? Um, and that is a Tuesday, right? Yes. Yes. So why don't I hear from people? Um, Shalini? Um, do you have a time of, of day that is better for you on February 1st? Um, 5, 5.30, 6, 6.30? Yeah, it, at this point, it doesn't matter. I can dedicate one evening. Okay. So. Um, what do people feel about 6 or 6.30? That works. Okay. Which one? Which one is preferable? 6 or 6.30? 6. 6 p.m. 6. Okay. okay. Anybody have a problem with six? Okay. I will school myself because I'm so used to 6.30s. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is um, we need to look over the transition memo. Uh, we also need to um, uh, approve the minutes that came in. Um, 
And on the question of, let me put this one aside here, of minutes, um, there are several ways of doing it. Uh, one is, I mean, first of all, you know, we all should read the minutes, but sometimes things get very crazy on the council and you're just bare, dying in paper. And sometimes everybody doesn't read the minutes, but it is a good idea to read your committee minutes. Um, some committees designate somebody who says, I will make time, I will read over those minutes. And uh, if there's a problem, I will get back to you. Um, do you want to have us vote um, when we get minutes? Cause we need to do this quickly. So we have good turnaround and get them posted. Um, do we want to have the, the whole group approve the minutes or do you want to have somebody who automatically approves the minutes by looking it over and again this is open discussion here i'd like to have the whole group read them i'm not really super comfortable having just one person do do full overview okay anybody else with a comment on this okay i agree that we should all look at the minutes yes so this reminds me of something that i was thinking of saying um first of all thank you for electing me chair um, and I've talked with, um, uh, with everyone except Andy beforehand, because I felt Andy was um, not somebody who would be interested in taking over the chairmanship of this committee because it was deep work in the finance committee. But in um, reading over the minutes, I realized Andy has a very uh, crucial role in this committee. You are the only person who was on TSO last year. Um, and there are a lot of issues that I'm seeing where I'm thinking, oh, Andy knows the answer to that. So. Um, what I want to say to you, Andy, is um, feel free to um, raise your hand, butt in, um, bring us into the into what the issue means and what the uh, I can see there's some issues where the problems were not resolved, uh, where there's still some things to talk about. Um, so we will be drawing upon you a lot for that. I was on TSO the middle year. Okay, I was in CRC one year, TSO one year, and then back to CRC. So there's a lot of things that have been happening in detail. That I know a little bit about, but not that much about. Um, and in talking with the other members, um, I made it clear that I wanted a more collaborative style of, of um, chair chairing this committee, which means um, feel free to um, correct, uh, guide, aid, make suggestions. Um, it's a small committee. We don't have to be that formal in this committee. And um, so I'm, I'm hoping that people still feel able to do that and if there's any problems with that to, to, to let me know okay because um, there's a lot to this and I, I am used to being a council member not a committee chair um, as a council member you're just freer to express your own opinion uh, as a committee chair it's a different task and so I really do look for and really need your support and your help on this thing um, so if anyone has any comments to add to that um, this is a good time. I have a quick comment, Dorothy. Yeah. If that's okay. So just really quickly for for the um, benefit of also of the public, I think it might be helpful to clarify which item on the agenda we're on because we've we've jumped a little bit. Um, and so either we're jumping talking, ourselves we're into uh, the transition memo and items carried over from previous season. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank so you. So that's what we're going to be talking about right now. Um, Great. Thank you. Um, and I do appreciate your support on that to clarify yeah, things. Of course. No problem. Okay, so we had a lot of things on this um, memo. Um, let me see if I can find it right here. Okay. That's the minutes. Okay. okay. Excuse me, Dorothy, did you want to approve the minutes? Okay. Um, yes, I do want That's to approve part of it. You're right. And I was just realizing I was halfway into the minutes. Um, did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? I did not get them until sometime today. Um, so, um, and I'm seeing a lot of interesting things here. Um, how many people had a chance to read the minutes? One, okay. Um, would there be a serious problem, Lynn, if we put off approving the minutes until February 1st? Okay. I, I would like to do that because I, I saw a lot of things which were very interesting, which were partly done, halfway done, which are in process that I think we might want to make sure that we're all up to date on before we approve it. Um, so yeah. then we would put that off until the next meeting. Okay. Uh, Dorothy? Yes. Yeah, you know, just, just a couple of things. One is that I recognized as we were um, getting to the end of last uh, year's session that um, after the election, it was clear that 
I was the only member of the committee um, that was actually going to be serving on the next council. And uh, yeah. I ended up putting this as a high request um, on the uh, committee preference form because I felt like um, having at least one person for carryover yeah. um, might be helpful to the committee, both for um, the substance and for the process that the committee had evolved to go through. And uh, so I will do my best, but um, try not to be overboard um, in doing that. And the other thing that I just wanted to say is, is that um, I would encourage that um, you feel free to go to one other committee member, can be the vice chair, whoever you want, um, to help um, kind of proofread the report as you go through, at least in the first rounds, mm -hmm. so that um, you're, you're comfortable before sending them to the council. Um, it's good to have a second person looking at it and seeing if everything uh, got stated um, in the best possible way. I do that on the finance committee all the okay. time with, and it's really helpful. Yes, that is definitely, oh, Paul, yes, come speak in now. Thank you. So I think it's important for the committee to understand that the minutes are not, that it's just a reflection. Did it capture the discussion and the activity from the last meeting? Andy was the only person at that meeting, unless you all have taken the time to watch the video from it. So it's not a, dis it's, if there are items in the um, minutes that trigger something that you'd like to talk about, mm -hmm. that item you need to put on your agenda. You right. can't just sort of, you know, go through the minutes and sort of pick things out that you'd like to talk about. You, if right. you say, oh, there's three things I'd like to talk about, then mm -hmm. the chair can put that on the, on the agenda to, for discussion. Right. But in terms of the minutes itself, you know, uh, the idea on the minutes is just, did it reflect the, did it capture the flavor of the meeting mm -hmm. and did it capture all the actions of the meeting? Just want to be clear on okay. what that role is. All right, so it, I, what, my point one is I want everybody to read the minutes, but point two, as Paul points out, it's a question, are they accurate? The only one who can answer that, uh, unless somebody else watched the video, is Andy. Andy, did you get a chance to read the minutes? I did not, because as you point out, um, they reached us fairly late, and I was at that point uh, trying to grab some dinner and help right. out at the house, so. Okay. Okay, so then we will put that off to the next meeting. But I think that, thank you, Paul. That's a, I, I knew that in one part of my brain, but it's good to clarify that. Okay. Um, and looking at the minutes is not just a general conversation opener. It, it is the question, are these accurate? But we will, when you read the minutes, please be prepared to discuss at the next meeting any items that you think you want to carry over. Um, so, okay. Let's see. We have measures that will automatically be carried over per town council rules of procedure. Uh, North Pleasant Street upgrades in North Amherst. Um, and um, that is to do with uh, changing parking areas around the park, I believe. No, it parking. Doesn't. Okay. Uh the, the North Pleasant one had to do with um, relocation of sidewalk oh, and streets in the area Pine. north from the university towards mm -hmm. Pine Street. And it was a fairly complex uh, presentation that was made, I think, both at the council meeting and in a little bit more detail at the committee meeting mm -hmm. by Gilford Mooring. And there's a substantial amount of material that I recall being in both packets, the council packet and the committee packet. So um, what we would need to do with that is to get that material mm -hmm. circulated, make sure that Gilford um, does not wish to make any changes to the material and um, it then um, invite Guilford um, to that meeting. Guilford attends as uh, the superintendent of public works a fair number of the TSO meetings because so many issues end up crossing paths with 
um, the town services that he provides through his department. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's sort of the brief comment. Um, it really is a very substantial um, project that's underway. And uh, what happened to TSO, just so you know, is that we were given two referrals at the same time. The second one was the Kendrick Park one that you referred to, okay. which we substantially finished. The, the one piece that's left is a fairly small piece in comparison to the parking pieces that mm -hmm. um, were, were done. And uh, what essentially happened is Guilford talked about both uh, at the committee meeting, but said that he wanted the Kendrick Park one done first because of the um, order in which he was planning on proceeding with work. Well, sometimes it's hard to remember whether you hear things in committee or town council, but I'll tell you, I, looking at this, it says Eastman Lane, Pine Street, crosswalks, multi-use paths, lots and lots of stuff. I really don't remember any substantive discussion of this at the town council. So, uh, yes, so you're saying this is a big item and we need to get a lot of material on that. Um, Anna, I see your hand up. Yeah, so I um, tried to do some digging because I was I wanted to read more material on this. So I believe if folks go into the SharePoint file, this is from the um, July 15th packet. Um, you can find the memo and the um, the July 15th, 2021, if you if you're interested in looking back. But yeah, I agree because I started reading and I was like highlighting and noting and I was like, I need so I need maps and um, way more information. But um, that's where this is. And that's where the maps are, et cetera, et cetera, for folks who are looking um, who would like to verse themselves. Um, I had some other questions, but that'll be it for now. Thanks. So then is it appropriate for me to ask Athena to forward, just to list this and to send it forward to us so we don't have to go to SharePoint to find it? Absolutely. I think, however, what you should do is go through the whole list and mm -hmm. decide which ones you want to take first. Okay. And okay. then also Paul may have some information that says some of these are more urgent than others. Okay. okay. So okay. Um, but I would take more questions on just this item if there are any more questions. Okay. And Shalini has her hand up. Yeah, I was also gonna just ask Paul actually about this and also generally speaking, as we go through this list, uh, maybe we could get a sense from Paul and then maybe from Andy and then amongst us, what is uh, the priority and how do we prioritize? And then amongst us, how are we prioritizing uh, mm -hmm. these different issues. And then we might have some chance later on to talk about some of the things that are not on the list that we think are important. And so. So do you think it would be a good idea if after this meeting, I put together a list of these items and then uh, also say, add other items if you want and send it out to you for you to think about and to respond or um, whether that's going to, too soon to do that. Um, well, I just call on, uh, on Anika. What do you have to say? I was just going to say some has uh, been echoed that, you know, looking through SharePoint, I'm looking through this agenda. It definitely seems like it's packed. Um, very interesting, but definitely would be a lot of uh, reading and continued research. And then eventually it points out that, you know, it does need a lot of um, community outreach and input. Uh -huh. Thank you. So that is right. Okay. So, um, can, I can, ask that... a can I ask yeah. a question? Yes. So I just want to put myself in the right frame because I, I did write, go through and write lots of questions that might be more specific to each of these, these proposals or not proposals, these measures. Um, so right now, the, the purpose of this conversation is for us to think through our priorities of the items that are carried over. And we are also currently going to ask Paul for his his sort of one to five scale of how how much of a priority is this? Is that correct? Great, thank you. Um, so my part B of that is things that have arisen from this that might be more about our process. So I'll give an example. Uh, item or number one, the North Pleasant Street, what we were just talking about. One of the one of the questions that came up for me 
is it mentions TSO practice amongst similar public ways requests is to seek input from, from Transportation Advisory Committee, Disability Access Advisory Committee, Public Shade Tree, um, something that I'd love to consider. And maybe I'm sorry if I'm being redundant and I should have just emailed this, but you know, is what is our actual process and how is that clarified so to make sure we're consistent, to make sure we're not accidentally leaving a group out, things like that. Because I think one of the one of the important parts of the conversation prioritizing these is what's also coming up as a result. And for me, that's that's a question of process that I'd love to see us formalize a bit. So, um, Andy, um, is there I mean, uh, there's a decision making process, but I don't think that's really what she's referring to. Um, no, uh, <clears throat> what before we would decide on issues in the last council, and Kendrick Park is a good example, um, but not the only one. Those are the committees that we would most frequently like to hear from. There might be other committees. So normally we would identify the committees, refer, um, ask those committees if they um, would um, offer any advice to us and uh, we would um, schedule our major presentation and discussion, depending upon how timing worked, because we had to manage it against what the de if there were any deadlines. But we made sure that we got the reports in from those committees. So, um, for example, uh, when you're dealing with uh, crosswalks and sidewalks, you really do want to hear from the D Disability Access Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. and we would make sure that that committee had an opportunity to um, consider the proposal that was coming out of uh, public works and um, offer their comments and uh, that we would have the comments to consider. And so that was generally how we went about doing it. And it was really um, the chair's role to try and manage the timeline of that process and propose it back uh, because it's very, you know, it, it's just a matter of logistics. And then the, uh, in the last round, the chair, uh, Ms. Evan Ross, would uh, be the one who would contact whichever committees, uh, I assume by email uh, and uh, phone if necessary, and uh, make sure that they were able to schedule it within their meeting process and get the report back to us in time for us to work from their reports as opposed to getting the report after we'd made a decision which would not serve a purpose. So when you did this before, did you um, had you reached the point in your work on TSO um, to do that or had that not yet happened? I mean, the first person that I would talk with would be uh, the DPW um, and to see where they are on it, I assume. Um, I mean, is this halfway done or is it just started? This one, I don't think that there was much work done on it because the effort was to get Kendrick Park done. So okay. Paul might have some comment on it, right? Yeah, I do. Good, thank you, Paul. Um, so yeah, so I'm your staff liaison. So the work that you need from staff goes should come through me. And so I, you know, with all these things, Dorothy, I can work with you to sort mm -hmm. of tee up what what's needed, and so we can sort of lay out the game plan. It's that, it, that's what happens with the the chair and sometimes the vice chair, in terms of are we re is the committee ready to take on an action? So you're not spending your t valuable time um, doing things that aren't that aren't productive. Right. Um, so and I think you know you all identified that. Item one is very big, very complex. We're not really ready to bring this forward. We've got so many other things in the engineering department right now. So, you know, that's not in the, you know, immediate um, offing for, for you um, at this point in time. But uh, we're, I think, you know, we'll, I'll be talking with uh, the DPW about what they're, when they think they will be able to take, bring this forward in a more detailed way, because mm -hmm. what was presented was a sort of giant, a general overview. And there's a lot of very detailed plans on every section of the road because it's a very long section of road that need to be reviewed. Um, and as you know, as Andy said, you want we want DAAC and T, um, TAC to 
to weigh in. And I'm assuming, you know, TAC was always, sometimes TAC was asked, sometimes they weren't. Um, I'm assuming you want TAC to be in, invited to review these things. So we, we do, but I, I wondered that a conservation committee wasn't mentioned here. Um, I'm just. So, so, um, so the conservation commission would have its role because they, they have a regulatory body and right. Anna can, can address that um, because she used to be on the conservation commission, but right. they, you know, they, they have a very defined a purview that they right. will have to be, things will have to be filed with them and they'll have to go through that own set, their own separate process. Mm -hmm. um, any comments on that, Anna? Yeah, just really, you know, CONCOM is regulatory. Paul said that, but just driving that point home, they are tapped in when something falls within their jurisdiction. In this mm -hmm. case, they'd be tapped in by DPW. Um, and so it's less less relevant okay, to okay. us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Paul, if I'm off, second. tell me, but yeah. No, that's and if just one, like one other committee that may come into play here and we would, we, until we see the plans, we won't know is the Public Shade Tree Committee. Because there are trees. They're on, they're listed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. My, my question for you, Dorothy, is, you know, I think uh, thinking again, try to, trying to think about this from a systems perspective of are we deciding when we're outreaching or have we asked these committees, when would you like us and how would you like us to reach out to you? Um, that would be my consideration here is, you know, like the example Andy just gave, I think was a really good one of, you know, if sidewalks are involved or crosswalks are involved, we want to make sure we're reaching out to the disability access DAC, I don't know. Uh, but I think that, you know, making sure that we've done the initial outreach to them to say, this is when we currently are tapping you in. Is there something we're missing, right? Is there something that we need to make sure that you are consulted on um, as well that we might not have thought of just to make sure we're not putting the assumption of when they want to be outreached to? Well, I may have misunderstood what Paul said, but I thought that he was saying that he would help coordinate the timing of, of these. Um, is that correct, Paul? Yes. So that we yes. don't have to kind of, okay. So, but we will, we will work on that, Anna, because it's a very good question of, of how, what happens first and what order. Yeah. And I was definitely speaking more generally. So no need to get into the weeds right now. Right. Okay. okay. But and also, Shalini, Dorothy, hand yeah. Up. And so Paul, I'm assuming that you would help us identify which committees and then I'm also thinking is it if it's impacting stakeholders like the businesses that are on that road or right. um, and so or residents and so I'm guessing that you would help us and that's something we can obviously formalize at some point in our outreach plan mm -hmm. that when we're making any decision these are this is how you go about these are the stakeholders who need to be reached out at what point with what information and who's reaching out to them. And so all of that can be formalized, but just for now, mm -hmm. uh, Paul, the question is really, so you'll be helping us out with the- yeah, That's an excellent point because that's a really important function for the this committee is to make sure it connects with the people who are impacted by these decisions, by your mm -hmm. decisions and make sure that there's adequate um, public input, um, that there's places for people to, to comment. This is, again, think of this like as the Pomeroy Village and the amount of work that we did for that, for the right. Pomeroy yes. Village roundabout. This yeah. is akin to that uh, because it will impact a lot of um, properties um, and and making sure that we're touching base with everybody in advance because that, that's really, that's that's a really important function. And we can say, mm -hmm. here's what we're doing. Here's what the plan is. Here's what we're doing. And you can vet it and say, well, what about this? What about that? Um, and we need to reach out on these other groups. Well, I, I know that Shalini was working on an outreach plan um, and it, it kind of got put aside because there were other things that had to be done. Um, I think that we need to kind of try to formalize that um, a little bit better and then check with um, you to see how that works um, so that we don't have to always have to you know, invent the system. And I think that's uh -huh. part of what Anna was saying, but I, I realize she wants a more organized system of doing this and I totally agree. Um, so that's one of the things that we will be putting together. Um, the, again, the and question- Anika, is, Anika has her hand up too. Okay, oh boy, I couldn't see it. Yes, Anika, okay, so, thank you. So this question I think is for Paul as well. Um, and mo most of us were at the facilities tour. Would it be helpful, and excuse me if this is repetitive, to maybe have something along those lines where uh, some of the departments that we would have to reach that there is an opportunity 
uh, for them to to come and, and join a meeting and and speak to and you know speak to us um, is in terms of their their functions and you know a lot of the questions that have just been asked uh, about about the different departments as well or communication and outreach. So this isn't for we're not talking about a specific proposal. You're talking about just general information, and I would. Defer in general, the... but what would um? So we're not taking up all sorts of time, but maybe with uh, once we have identified what issues we would be dealing with in the foreseeable future, um, to maybe tie in those folks. Um, it would be great to have something where we would talk with everybody, but I'm I'm thinking about time as well. So, so I guess I might defer to Lynn as to how the committee gets its business. That you get referrals from the council, right? And then they get referrals from the council. TSO can also generate uh, issues it would like to look at, although we would hope that that would be consistent with council priorities. And but Anika, to your question, I think um, what would be useful here is to have uh, Dorothy and. Shalini or anybody else in the committee really lean on Paul, myself and Andy in terms of kind of how do we bring something that's this big forward and who needs to be involved? Because um, it is a huge project. It's, the, it's not just one intersection, it's about five or six intersections that are gonna be affected by this sidewalk and so forth. So, um, and it was a request, I believe, Paul, I'm correct, that generated out of residents to do something like this. It, it kind of was an agreement with residents as well mm -hmm. as people in the town. So uh, I think what we need to do is kind of move on to the next, but take this and say, okay, when we're ready to bring it forward, how do we bring it forward? Who has to be involved and have a whole plan just around this one? Okay. Okay. So um, the... Participatory budgeting uh, with the university um, to do with, um, I, I don't see this as a major item at this time, but I, though some of you have read this over very carefully and have questions, so I think this is your time to ask them or to comment. I can go first. Yeah, um, I've thought about this earlier, and I think it's a very important issue um, to engage the community on this issue. However, I think our community engagement plan needs to be in place first, because mm -hmm. otherwise we will just end up hearing from the same people we hear from. So I think once we have a community engagement plan so we know mm -hmm. how to systematically reach out to different constituents and then we are also work with the institutions in town like umass and so forth who can then help us um, and that's part of what's proposed is that we work with the institutions but i feel like we need to first figure out our bid okay thank you um andy um yeah. yeah, participatory budgeting is um, originates in the charter and with the Charter Commission. And uh, the Charter Commission required that there, are, uh, that there be an appointment of this commission. And uh, they did meet and they did provide us on the council as a whole with a fairly complete report that was a, um, if I recall correctly, was a PowerPoint presentation. Um, it's, you know, it may make sense to um, make sure that that PowerPoint presentation is made available again to the entire committee since uh, either uh, we haven't looked at it in a long time or we've never seen it. And um, I think it was, in my recollection, it was pretty complete. And uh, then if there's a desire to do so, the major presenter of that report at the council was Meg Gage and um, maybe ask Meg if she would attend a committee meeting for, you know, half hour or so to um, answer questions about where they ended up and what they were suggesting. Um, but I think, I, I think that's as far as I would want to go right now. 
but but Andy, this this looks like it's not the same as the participatory budget commission. This is town gown working partnership, which I thought was something I hadn't heard of before. But uh, 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 I'll call on Anna and then uh, Lynn and Paul can clarify. I think this is this was one of the recommendations from the participatory budgeting commission from their report, if I'm reading it correctly. You know, I mean, I. I think this is one of those things that it, it's a really exciting concept and this is a massive, uh, massive lift, right? And that's not to say we shouldn't do it, but yeah. you know, I mean, even some of the things that are mentioned in here get into like HR policy, right? Of, of offering release time, of offering, um, some of them get into issues with, with mm -hmm. um, faculty governance around approving student credit for internships. I think that this is where it's, it, this is a big, big, big thing. Um, and so I, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't start it. I do think we should make strides on this, but I just want us to recognize that this is not a small nor a simple um, pitch that's in front of us with, with this. So that's, that. I just want us to recognize the magnitude and scope because I was, right. um, yeah, when I read it, I was like, wow, that's, that's a, that's an idea. Yeah. Right. So um, Lynn and Paul, um, Am I correct in inferring that this may not be something we're doing right away? I would agree with that. Okay. All right. So, yes. Um, though we are ever interested in cooperating when we can. Okay. And, and you're right. But we're getting deep into other people's power zones to do that. Um, okay. So then the next one, I believe, is the revision to town council policy regarding the control and regulation of public ways um ah in relation to okay this has to do with lunch carts do we we are in charge of public ways tso do we decide we're going to go lunch cart by lunch cart or do we say we're going to delegate that to the authority of the board of license commissioners to do that and um i think uh, in talking with lynn earlier today she reminded me that tso dealt with the sidewalks but they didn't deal with the streets and the issue of um the carts are on the street in a parking space do they get charged? Do they, whatever, whatever happens. They, um, and it's a complex issue and we had an interesting discussion, but I think this is a topic that we could discuss and perhaps it wouldn't be the most challenging one. Um, so Andy, you have some thoughts on this. Yeah, we, we simply ran out of time on this one at the end of the last council. It wasn't that it was that complex. Right. And what happened was at the second to the last meeting of the committee for the entire, for the uh, prior council, I made a recommendation to Chairman Ross about um, a possible revision to the to the policy that would encompass the issue, and there was never time within those that last meeting to take it up, so it was uh, dropped at that point. But I have the email that I sent to Evan. Great, great. Uh, that I can send back through Dorothy and then Dorothy can decide whether to send it on to the committee. Right. Um, and, uh, but that's kind of where it was left because mm -hmm. it, it was actually fairly late at night. And uh, mm -hmm. I said, I have some ideas of how we can address the problem, but I don't want to do drafting at 10 o'clock at night under right. uh, this kind of a, issue if we're going to talk about changing policy. So I think that probably the next thing for me to do is find that uh, email mm -hmm. I sent to Evan and send it to Dorothy. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And Shalini, you have a comment. Yeah, I was thinking that this may be something we should um, tackle, just given that we are hearing from people how our businesses are being hurt, are hurting. And so mm -hmm. if this is something simple and straightforward, and it is providing clarity to the businesses downtown, what they can or can't do. Maybe this is something we should prioritize. Okay. Though so, uh, I would say it's more complex because we're dealing with a cart and not a brick and mortar, but so it's mm -hmm. just things. Yes, Andy, you have your hand up again. Yeah, I was going to actually say exactly what you said. Uh, um, <clears throat> this is an issue that I've dealt with back from the days when uh, we had a select board and not a council. And we spent a lot of time on lunch carts then too. There is some inherent tension between um, 
the entrepreneurs who really want to do the lunch carts. And I think we all have seen them around, a few of them, the one that's um, always out near the um, post office and uh, the Unitarian Church um, is the one that's been around the longest time. And uh, there is complaints from restaurants that is competing for their business. Uh, but uh, I think that, uh, you know, in many communities, lunch carts have been a part of the downtown scene. And uh, uh, it's always been to try and accommodate them as best we can. But this really has to do not with the um, licensing, because that's in the Board of License Commissioners, but it has to do with um, giving them reserved parking spaces yep. in which to park their carts should they wish to use the street as opposed to the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and what fee the town would or would not get. Um, you know, so that's part of it. Yes. Yeah, so I, this is a very interesting, although complex topic. Uh, I, I hope that we might be able to get to this sooner rather than later. Um, and that we could probably deal with that. Uh, any other thoughts on that one? Okay. Um, let's see. Carried over. Okay. So this is another one that, um, This has to do with safety zones and speed limits. This is the um, request um, to, ad to adopt MGL charter chapter 90, 17C and 18B, which then allows the city council to in the interest of public safety and without further authority, establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour on any roadway inside a thickly settled or business district in the city, of, city or town um, in any way that is not a state highway. So this is something that we did discuss in the town council before. Um, and um, I remember this maybe in year two. Um, so what is, why is this still up before us? What happened, Lynn, on this one? I'm gonna to defer to Andy. Um, I think that it was just a matter of, uh, as everything we set priorities to what we did, Mm -hmm. In the first year, this was referred to CRC, and I was on CRC in the first right. year, not the second year. And uh, I think that we've really only had a discussion at that point, and it's never come back to another committee. Uh, the um, step that was taken at that time was that uh, uh, Captain Ting from the police department and uh, uh, I think it was uh, at that point um, the town engineer, uh, uh, Jason Skeels, uh, yeah. came and made a presentation of how the statute works and how speed limits are established. And uh, if you recall, there was a serious injury, I believe, of somebody at on North Pleasant Street, which provoked the discussion of speed Thank limits you. from a citizen. And that's why it was before the council it was actually a, uh, a comment that was made during a committee meeting or during a council meeting rather. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have heard um, complaints um, probably as long as I've been involved in town government about speed limits and um, I think we heard some during the campaign. And uh, so it's, it's probably an important issue for this committee to understand and understand what the options are, but it may be necessary to go back to the kind of people who made that presentation two years ago to CRC and ask them to make the presentation again, mm -hmm. because it's clearly within this committee's uh, perspective. Okay. We really need their perspective uh, professional expertise and um, um, you know it's up to Paul but um, you know I think that uh, uh, Captain Ting and uh, uh, either Guilford or uh, Jason would be have, willing to come back and mm -hmm. um, explain it again. 
Right. I think Pat DeAngelis is the one who made the, the presentation in CRC on this issue. Um, so Paul, um, what do you think? You just moved on my screen. Um, how, where do you see this in the list of priorities? Yeah, so I think this has been hanging out there for a while, and I think it's a question that comes up periodically, and the town council ought to address it, whether you want to adopt these regs or not. And I think the first the first step is to educate ourselves about what this means, okay. uh, and then you you'll want to do some outreach on it, and then make a recommendation to the full council. Okay, so that's clear: education, outreach, recommendation. Okay. Um, I don't remember what whether they said 25 miles an hour was a good idea or not a good idea. Um, is that something that you can share with us, Paul? I don't remember, but we can certainly have, I mean, you'll, we can make, have them come make the presentation to you and then you have a robust discussion at that point. Right, okay. Um, and the, something that's connected with that are those um, things that read your miles per hour, the, mm -hmm. the signs, um, and, um, I know they, I don't know how much money they cost, but we have a solar powered one on Amity, which I believe has had a great effect in not, not keeping it to 25 miles an hour, but keeping it to 35 miles an hour, uh, to restricting speed, speeding from people. Um, so that's something we can look at. There really are two pieces to it, Dorothy, uh, because one is what the law allows and the uh, process allows for establishing speed limits which uh, was helpful to have DPW present, but it doesn't do much good to have a speed limit if you can't enforce it. But you can't enforce and, it. Uh, that's what Captain Ting was talking about. So that's why both of them were essential parts of that presentation. Right, though I, I do know that there's a lot of self-enforcement on Amity because of that sign. Um, it helps. But it's not gonna it's not gonna stop a speeder speeder, but it tops the the, the regular uh, preoccupied driver who's not aware what they're doing. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff that does deals with public ways. I can see that that's gonna be a, a big area. Um, the TSO review process. Okay, there is a document that um, we received. That Wait, I think Dorothy, I think we're on parking permits. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Right. Yes, okay. we've been waiting for this. Um, this is something that's been brought up at meeting after meeting. And um, I believe uh, Lynn told me today there was gonna be a presentation at the town council on this. So we're gonna get, I think it's Sean Mangano who's been doing a study, if I'm correct. Um, so that we're gonna hear about that. Um, so we don't have to do anything until we hear the report and then we then will discuss it. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends what the, I assume the council will refer that the uh, parking Mm -hmm. um, presentation to one of the committees, but pr probably TSO. So that will be a pretty big um, delegation to you. Okay. All right. So that is that is definitely something that we will be dealing with sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And it's been on the table for a long time. So that's, mm -hmm. that's good. Um, who else would it go to if not TSO? Uh, it could also go to finance because there's some finance, right yeah. it could go to finance yes okay so okay so then we're moving on to the tso review process and that's the one that has the green um, highlighting on it uh, this was adopted i believe kind of late in the year on tso and it was applied to um, um, the lincoln avenue parking thing but uh, that was i have strange comments on that so I'm not quite sure what we are supposed to do. Look at it again and see if we like it. I, it, I thought it got adopted. So Andy, I guess you're on the carpet again on this. Um, yeah, it said it was adopted in, on the 6th of August. What? The committee is actually, I think we reported it to the council to see if there were council comments in the, in the general uh, uh, comments from the council were very positive. Um, it is a uh, document that, that identifies all of the issues from street width, nature of the traffic, uh, sidelines, everything that you might think of. Um, 
if it uh, needed to be reviewed. We actually used it twice. The other is there's a small dead end street off of uh, College Street that is um, also called Kendrick Place that has nothing to do with that building that is called Kendrick Place. Um, and uh, it, uh, I think we adult ultimately adopted the recommendation as a council um, to change parking there, but we used that Christ set of criteria right. twice. Uh, yes. And Lincoln, of course, is a different issue. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure we want to go deeply into that tonight. Yep, no, not tonight. Um, so I think that um, this has been adopted, it has been applied. Um, I think that um, we could take a quick look and see if we want to like it the way it is or whether there are any, any small changes to it. Um, it's on this, it's given on, on our list. Why? So, do I yeah, because I didn't read that. I didn't have a chance to read the details. I was on many meetings today, so um, I can try to sum it up. If that's great, helpful. thank you. I yeah. Really so, hope. so essentially, this is saying we have two different policies, and we need to make sure that they're aligned with each other. So, there's the one, the um, town council committee on town services and outreach proposed process for the review of bylaws, public ways requests, and town council policies, and then there's the second one from September, a month, a month and a half later, saying um, that is a process for public way review specific to public ways and is a separate review process. So we need to mm -hmm. put A and B next to each other and say, do these line up or not? But then the other part that the third kind of part of this is that there's also um, the, the CRC um, wants to wants TSO to adopt the um, community impact review process as well. And so basically we just need to make sure we're using the same same litmus test for whatever we're doing um, and they need to line up with each other. So it's it's not writing a new one. It's just kind mm -hmm. of looking at them all together. Okay, this is something that mm -hmm. I'm hoping that a small subcommittee could deal with and bring back to the committee. Um, so uh, Shalini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, this would include some of the things that some of us are interested in about the community outreach and what are the state, you know, the stages of communication uh, with the community. The first phase is an education phase. The second, maybe of collection of feedback. The third is, what did we do with that feedback? Communicating that to the people or ha having all of that information located in a particular place and letting people know where to find that information and what we did with that and then coming back again to the community. So, you know, these are the things mm -hmm. that will be woven in once we have a clearer outreach. And I think I agree that maybe having a working group or subcommittee yeah. to, and then we can keep coming back. And I mean, that's the hub. So other people in this uh, committee can send ideas and their own, what they've observed observations and everything to that core group. And then that core group can integrate that and then present it back to the committee. That, that sounds good. And it gets to a lot of the things that we're talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the things we're all agreed upon is that we need to have more outreach and we can't just kind of do a random kind of outreach differing for different things. We have mm -hmm. to have a very clear idea of what we want to do and how we want to do it in the order we want to do it. Uh, Anna. But it makes sense, Shawnee, thank you for that. I think you're, you're spot on. And I'm curious if it makes sense to do it as sort of a two-part process, because I think this first part of looking at the two existing review processes, lining them up before we start kind of uh, figuring out what our community impact review process, because unless I'm mistaken, that does not exist yet, right? Am I right? So, so I'm curious if part one is to kind of do those first two policies get those straightened out and then we can at least not add a third one into the mix, but instead build on it and, and expand. I'm curious if that makes sense to folks. I, th I think that makes sense, but uh, it's possible that at, at the committee that's trying to put the two together may decide we have to sit and do that community outreach piece first. Um, okay. That, that committee would look at it and see what that, what that, what it means. But I think um, some really strong focus is, and uh, clear looking at the documents is what we need to do, which is something yeah. that has to be done very specifically. Um, okay. Um, then uh, there's that an item that was recommended not to be carried over 
And that is the parking regulations on Sunset and Lincoln Avenue from Northampton Road to Amity Street. And um, we went through quite a process. Um, it ended up in a place that I felt was um, truthfully illogical. Um, the One of the issues is every time you talk about a particular street, the issue is raised, well, it impacts other areas. And I believe Guilford has expressed great willingness and interest in doing a more general look at, you know, at, at, at an area um, and then dealing with it that way. And um, so that's what I wanted to put forth there. And Shalini, what do you want to say here? Sorry, okay. Um, yeah. I had a question about that decision actually back then. And I've, okay, so I'll put it out now that that there were suggestions made by um, Guilford, I believe, earlier mm -hmm. on how that situation could be dealt with without going through closing it down for parking. There was another way like we market or something. And, and I just feel like we said no, and then we closed it, but we never heard back whether we can go back to those other, at least those other things that were already agreed upon that that would mitigate uh, some of the problems. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, maybe that's something that uh, could be presented to all of us again that this and I th I do believe it's not resolved just because we voted that way did not yep. resolve the issue so I do believe that should be brought back but yep. with the presentation going back to the original recommendations mm -hmm. that sounds Andy. interesting um, yeah Andy yeah um uh, any of you who were on the council before and Paul can uh, Correct me if my memory on, on the pieces of this is incorrect. This is Lincoln Avenue has been an, on another ongoing issue that goes back to uh, my time on the select board before we had the new form of government. Uh, the uh, uh, problem as a general nature is that uh, there are people from the university who want to get free parking um, and not have to pay the large fees to the university. And they were uh, at times uh, taking up large numbers of spaces, uh, the closer to the university, the more likely that was to be. And uh, they um, created a lot of problems for both um, traffic flow through the street and um, being able to, have reasonable sight lines for um, people making turns into the street or yeah. um, um, to some extent also just getting out of driveways of homes, depending upon the time of day. And uh, so what had happened in the first round was an effort to um, get the um, no parking restrictions from intersections to a point beyond the intersection that was reasonable for sight line purposes um, taken care of. And that was done. It took uh, DPW a little bit longer than we had hoped to get the signs up, but the signs did get up. And um, mm -hmm. then there was the general parking question itself. And uh, that came up as a separate issue and it was what the policy that we talked about before was actually developed and used in the first round having to do with Lincoln. And um, there was a proposal that was made um, in the past out of the last TSO in a fairly uh, narrow vote, but it was uh, forward with recommendation to the council um, and what it was doing was, um, and I don't have the exact wording in front of me, but essentially uh, proposing that uh, parking be totally prohibited from the street during business hours, right. except during the summer. And so it had both a date specific time uh, when it would not apply during the summer months and it had time specific times. And that ended up for the council. Um, and then an important um, piece changed in between the T 
TSO meeting and the council meeting, and that was that the university said that in order to build the Lincoln Avenue apartment that they're talking about replacing and are, are now in the process of replacing with the new building, that they were going to be closing Lincoln Avenue and uh, that it wasn't clear as to whether Lincoln Avenue is going to be closed at the university and permanently or temporarily. And uh, so that there was some feeling that we really needed to see how that change in traffic flow uh, was going to be affected by the closure at the university end. And uh, so when it got to a vote because of that, it ended up that the proposal that had come out of TSO was defeated by one vote. And uh, that uh, was where it uh, ended up. And of course, this whole thing with uh, looking at neighboring streets then became un unnecessary if we were not, because the question was, if you um, were to restrict parking on one set of streets, how would it affect neighboring sets of streets? Mm -hmm. Is that something that you wanted to look at? So that's why uh, the um, item is written as something not to be carried over. Um, if uh, the uh, Lincoln traffic is not um, being substantially changed in the parking is not being substantially changed by the closure of the street at the university end, then, uh, you know, it's a question of whether somebody wants to bring it back before the council uh, again, but um, mm -hmm. the thought was to wait and see. So right. I think that's the sum best summary that I can give on that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, very helpful, Andy. And right now is not the time to do it. We have to, um, under COVID, with the closures and whatever, uh, the parking is not as it was. We have to wait and see for the students to come back and to uh, we need to let, let things settle down just a little bit. Um, but um, uh, Paul, I, I, I wouldn't mind letting Guilford know that we are interested in his thoughts. That he had, he supported this and I think he, um, was interested in looking at some of the, the related streets, but that we would bring this back when we see if the problem is still there, um, you know, in a month or so, two months or so. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we won't know. I mean, Lincoln Ave, Lincoln Ave is going to be closed for quite some time while they do construction. So we won't have evidence in a month or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if the council wants to reconsider its vote, it should it can it has that ability to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of the parking changes have are being changed already. That some of the weird little parking that they have, uh, I think they're opening one lane. It's something that I that I was hearing about that the, some of the parking that they did they're changing already. Um, but we'll have to get the update on that. Um, uh, Shalini, uh, Paul, do you, do you know whether we put up the signs for like, I mean, the big problems we were hearing was how they would block the cars were blocking the driveways. And if there was a way to put signs or something, I think that my recollection is that's what that was one of the suggestions. And did we ever fall act on those yeah. suggestions? Yeah, I think I believe the signs were up at the time, actually. Um, it's not, the first action that the council took was followed mm -hmm. through by DPW, which yeah. was to put signs up. DPW does not paint sidewalks. That's easy. Okay. The, the signs are for mm. no parking, but the signs, there was a question, would they paint no parking mm. along the, around the right. uh, driveways? And that they did not do because as they think they said they don't do it. Right. Um, so they put the, after that discussion came up at the council, uh, Paul did check with Guilford and in fact, as the council voted, those signs were erected. Okay, mm -hmm. so yes. that that much happened. That was almost a year ago, or more maybe. Mm -hmm. Now the question was this issue of further uh, the issue of parking, and um, that's the one that was defeated at the council with a seven to six vote, I think. Okay. And that was further parking restrictions based on time of the year and time mm -hmm. of the day. 
Right. So I'm, I'm hoping that we look at this again, but we have to see what's going on. Um, it is not a major problem right now, I believe, but again, I could check back at least, uh, but the students aren't back. So we have to see when we get back to life as normal, will we have our problems as normal and then have to deal with them. Um, and the students will be back on the 25th for classes. But it wasn't just students, it was faculty as well. Right. But well, one thing that happened is I believe UMass is providing some more parking spaces. We, we learned in the middle of this discussion that they'd run out of spaces, that there was actually a waiting list for parking spaces in the UMass lots. So we couldn't say, go necessarily put your car there. So the problem was very complicated. Um, but that part, I believe UMass is providing some additional parking spaces. Um, Anything else anyone wants on that one? And um, I think that that is. Can I, yeah. Can I just again? Yes. Just again, it's it because I walked through and it seemed, and I walked with the resident, and it seemed like again, we're not discussing the issue, but but could we just find out whether it's possible to highlight or paint that part which shows that you're not allowed to park beyond yeah. this and that's illegal to park beyond that part because that's what's happening right now is that cars are parked right at the edge of the they driveways are, right so it seems like they could be at least in the interim of a solution mm -hmm. so that's that goes to paul um yeah. they said guilford said it didn't last the snow the ice mm -hmm. what can we do yes yeah. So painting curbs is not, it's, it's not an enforceable action. It's not a sign. You can't, it, even if someone parked there, I mean, it, it's, it's information. Um, again, we tend, we have never, we don't do that um, because it is a maintenance thing. Once you paint it once, it looks crappy if you don't keep it up. Mm -hmm. And this is a very long street. And then it's not the only street that's going to be asking for this, obviously, right, right. because there's going to be other things. And if there's not a curb there, there's just some multiple things. I think, you know, enforcement is the answer. If people are blocking a driveway, they can call the APD. They'll come down and they'll ticket if someone is, you know, available and they're, and there's, they're, mm -hmm. they're blocking a driveway or something like that. Um, you know, I think, you know, we can um, also, I think we said we were going to be sending our parking enforcement officers down there as well mm. to at least to do better patrolling along Lincoln Ave. Um, and part of it is education. It, you know, once people learn, you, you need, you can't park right up against the driveway, but it, it, the rules are pretty clear that you can't block someone's driveway. Wait, question? Yes. Oh, sorry, Andy has his hand, but just a follow up question on this. Mm -hmm. Andy, did you, did you have a question related to this issue? No, okay. there's another issue. Okay. Okay. So the follow up question was, do people know that they can call up? Like, I didn't realize that it, I mean, I guess I knew it was enforceable, but I didn't really know that you can call up because then that's a solution that people can um tell, tell me they know they take yeah. pictures of them and send them yep. to the town manager but there have been cases when ambulances have not been able to get in or people haven't been able to get to work so calling up and waiting mm -hmm. for enforcement when you can't get out of your driveway safely mm -hmm. um they know they can call up but that's not sufficient solution but they do know that uh, okay uh, okay andy okay there was one other issue that was omitted from the list and uh i had uh sent it along to lynn and i think she may have sent it to the committee she, but I she did it. she did and we were gonna i'm gonna ask you to give a presentation of that issue andy thank you so much well again i um try and be as quick as i can about this um and it goes back some time because it actually goes to pre-council days there was a, used to be a refuse and recycling management committee that developed a refuse and recycling plan. And one of the re things that they came up with and felt very strongly about at the time was that composting needs to be encouraged. And uh, I know that this is uh, an issue that I've heard about at uh, a session of an MMA meeting too, that a number of communities are working very hard to encourage or require composting because anything that uh, people can put into compost 
um, doesn't go into the landfill and doesn't get buried and it, it, um, say it, it's uh, both more sound as far as um, ec the ecology as well as uh, the cost of uh, dealing with the, uh, just the waste. So that was part of it. And then actually the problem with uh, uh, refuse collection has gotten more complicated because the hope was that uh, we would be able to either encourage or require composting as a part of the uh, trash collection uh, work. People who take their uh, uh, trash to the uh, re recycling center uh, transfer station, they do have um, bins there for uh, taking compost, but to require that it be in roadside bins. So that was part of it. And then the other thing that happened is that most of you have been around long enough to know that we used to have two companies that provided uh, trash pickup and they would tend to compete with each other uh, to the point where at least it kept the price down and um, gave them a reason to give service. One company has now purchased both of them. So there's only one uh, provider in town that is doing curbside pickup for homeowners. And we have started getting some complaints about them, not huge numbers, but if you look, um, since this council was sworn in, I believe that there has been one um, a public comment that was uh, sent in fairly much right at the time we all took our, uh, became, uh, started our work as the second council. Uh, and uh, the, uh, so the, the, the um, there was a uh, big presentations were made at, two of the council meetings in the summertime regarding this whole set of issues and options that are available. And uh, because of the press of things that were going on at the time with all of these traffic studies, it was not something that was addressed. But if you go back to those meetings, um, you'll find some very impressive research and presentations that were made on the topic. So um, I, felt like um, a lot of time had been put into it. Our uh, people at the Department of Public Works had uh, worked with, a, a, had a grant and had worked with a consultant um, to develop those materials for the council. Um, I just didn't feel like it was uh, yeah. um, appropriate that it be lost and forgotten. So I'll right. leave it at that. Okay, and Anna. This is something that the um, health board of health is also navigating. Correct? Is this sh should we make sure we're not duplicating efforts, or at least you know? I mean, I know they're they're navigating composting because any refuse decisions need to go through them. So, um, yeah, I just want to make sure that we're coordinating with other folks who are also already working on this and not duplicating efforts. Uh, as well. And yeah, I'm looking at you, Paul. I'm hoping you can <laughs> fill me in. So yes, yeah, so um, the Board of Health is, is the regulatory body over the haul trash haulers in the town. So they're the ones who set the regulations and they're the ones who license the trash haulers. Um, the town council can establish bylaws. You're the, you're the lawmakers of the town. And so if you want to create a bylaw that says something, whatever it is, you can, you can create that. Um, the, this initiative was presented to the Board of Health. I think they have deferred on it uh, at this point in time just because they have, a, as you can imagine, a lot going on and they didn't think this is something that they could take on because it is a, it will be controversial. It'll be a tax or an added cost to people. Um, this is, you know, when you're requiring a new service, it's not free. And either this will be something that the town will have to absorb the cost or some, or the property owners will have to absorb the cost. Um, it's a, it's a good that we would like to see, that many people in the community would like to see. Um, so I think that they, and at least the last time I talked with them, the health director was just like saying, I can't take this on right now and totally reasonable and understandable. Um, 
but it, it's something, and I think Andy's right, that this is a, something that has been brought up multiple times. Uh, it, you know, the solid waste, say, the solid waste, whatever committee it was, presented to the board, of, the select board um, mm. in 2016 or something like that. Uh, we did a report to the select board at that time. So there have been different recommendations at different times. The, you know, it's interesting, the economics have changed. Uh, it used to be that we would get complaints because there was two companies that would send trucks up the same street to collect trash on the same day. Yeah. And now we're down to one company, but now people are saying, no, there's only one company and there's no competition and therefore the prices are being increased. Mm -hmm. um, there is a consolidation in the industry and it's, it's not beneficial to the consumer. One solution is to have, you know, town pickup, which yeah, so I that, 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 consider now. That is a solution. Yeah, so that, that's a significant new in, uh, department that you would create. And again, there would have to be a charge um, that instead of the trash haulers being, you know, paid, then we would, and, you know, purchase trucks and do all the things that we would need to do to establish that as a, as a new department. And then people, we would charge people and collect you know, we have to do all the things that go along with that as well. So that's a, that's a definite option as well. Yeah, um, a lot of that material that was presented through um, the, the state agency that provided that material that's available in the packets in the summer delves into that and gives examples of how other communities, both nationwide and in Massachusetts have addressed this issue. Um, there is, I've always thought, a, a complication if you build it in as a tax um, supported service, which is beneficial to the homeowners to the extent that it spreads it around to renters and taxes, uh, tax deductible. And basically it's proposition two and whether um, you, can, you, you would require an override in order to do that. Um, what number of towns and cities in Massachusetts have done is to do it through um, an enterprise fund or in our case, uh, a redoing of the enterprise fund and have it charged as fees for people who choose to do that alternative to just taking their uh, own trash to the mm -hmm. uh, recycling center transfer station that, um, is always the less expensive alternative for people who choose to do that. Okay, so we can go into that later. I, I, I need some um, understanding the tax repercussions of the two ways you discussed. I think I would need more time on that, but um, this is a topic that we need to we need to discuss. And you're right, it work was done on it. Something should be. Um, decided one way or the other or you know, how we're gonna deal with it. Um, and um, so that is the list of things. And um, at this point, I'm gonna ask if there are um, other items that people just wanna quickly bring up that you think we should be dealing with this year or that you want to do. And I see Shalini's hand is up. Well, one I've already talked about is the outreach plan. Right. Um, and so it could be something that we create and test out with our existing issues, and then we can roll it out to other committees and they can adapt it to mm -hmm. how it serves them. Uh, the other thing that I know that in the first two years we heard a lot was how is the DPW prioritizing their projects in town? And is that something that this committee could do is, um, I don't know if that's relevant to, us. I think it is because it's about town services and it's how is the DPW prioritizing which roads or projects oh, yeah, that okay. they work with, right? Um, so just for other people who joined, I don't, is that clear what I just said? Um, you're talking about roads and sidewalks. So, yeah, and so that's something of... we hear from residents all the time that they might use the click fix app mm -hmm to report that there is a problem in the sidewalk or there's a, a pothole or something. So we have the technology for residents to report it, but then it goes into this abyss and people never hear what happened to it. And then we don't know at the back end how the DPW is uh, prioritizing that, those different like 
is this street versus that or so coming up with some kind of working with the DAPW or supporting them or I don't know Paul So yes, yeah, so uh, we can make a presentation to you every two or three years we do a full analysis of all the roads in the town. I think those reports are on the website and that helps to prioritize which roads get paved and which ones don't. Um, and we can present that to you and I, we've done that previously. Uh, I don't think we've done it for the council. We've done it for the select board. I know since I've been here. Okay. Um, and so that helps those throws. We do not do that for sidewalks. We haven't done that for sidewalks. That's a, that's a different thing. So there's two different issues. One is how do we prioritize, how do we decide which roads get paved? And there's a, a formula that we follow for that. And then the second is, well, how, how do, when I submit a request for something, pothole mm -hmm. say, um, how does that get managed? And I think there are issues with that that have been challenging for us in the past, but that's something that's a very worthwhile thing for the for the committee to discuss as well. Okay, so I'm gonna, before I get back to that, I'm gonna call on Anna to see what she has to say on this. It's not about this. Okay. It's a, it's a separate thing. Okay, so the thing is everywhere I go, the word sidewalks comes up and uh, just in talking to the new director of the senior center and some, um, I guess, dementia free, uh, dementia friendly communities, uh, again, again, it's sidewalks that are the issue. And I know it's complex because our trees, our wonderful trees are some of the reason we have problems with our sidewalks. Um, and I know that you haven't doubled the uh, budget on that, but, um, uh, and I don't know if there's any way to get any more grants or federal money because uh, we need such an infusion of money that it's going to be hard to see where we'd get it in the budget. But just understand that that's we hear about that all the time. It's it's a, a major major topic that people bring up. Um, and the C click fix, just remember, it's a great item, but a lot of people don't know how to use it, and a lot of people who are worried, the old particularly, who worry about the sidewalks a lot, don't do it. So it's, it's um, you know, so many of these outreach things that we come up with are computer driven. And yet there's a large population in this town that really isn't using that kind of uh, access to information. Um, so uh, I do wanna put that on our, our agenda as a major issue because it, it just intersects with so many of our other quality of life aspects. Um, so, okay, Anna, new issue. New issue. Um, I've got plenty of issues to bring forward to y'all. All right, so uh, my first thought is um, I'd really love for us to look at, individually look at the CARP plan put forward from ECAC and just ha consider how we're making sure that we are really centering um, our, our climate action needs in the work that we're doing around um, decisions we make regarding the public way, regarding town services, Similarly, um, I, I would love, you know, and I think this got back to Anika's point earlier, um, and I'll, I think this is maybe more of an individual action that I guess, Anika, not to, I don't want to speak for you, but as a new counselor, I know that um, looking at the groups we typically meet with, so Transportation Advisory Council, Disability Access Advisory Committee, I didn't get that right, did I? Uh, I? I'd love to hear from or meet with those groups to think through their priorities. I know looking at, I've read their charges, um, I've looked at their their information, but we need to work with them so closely. It's really important we fully understand their purview and, and what they do and what they need. So those are my two things. Climate, uh, climate focus, let's all read that CART plan and maybe talk to ECAC about their, what they think we should keep in mind. And, uh, our other advisory groups that we rely on. Okay, so I think that's a great thing to do. Um, and uh, do we have any other uh, issues that people want to bring up that we should be thinking about? And then I'm gonna ask Lynn and Paul, we've been so talking about so many issues. There's something really big and obvious that we should be thinking about <laughs> we haven't mentioned. Anika, just go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so, I just want to add, yes, uh, first, Anna, yes, I agree with everything you said, and you spoke for me correctly. Uh, and second, I wanted to ask also if we could be in contact so we could be as supportive of folks who are dealing with seniors, so uh, senior center, um, those dealing with 
homeless, those struggling with addiction, and also folks that are doing uh, the good work with all of the youth and particularly underserved. Um, so we can assure that we are being as supportive as we possibly can be. Yes, um, Jerry, definitely uh, in, in some preliminary talks, we've several of us have discussed that we want to spend more time thinking about the um, Department of Senior, Senior Services and um, the center uh, and uh, how we can reach out to seniors. And again, that does segue onto sometimes the um, ability to deal with um, computers and meetings and Zoom because it's, it's, you know, it's great for those of us who know how to do it, but a lot of people aren't really signed up on that. So yes, town services are not just our brick and mortar buildings, our public um, buildings that we're doing, but they're also um, with the people that we have to do, deal with. So um, any particular thoughts that people wanna add on that? Uh, any particular focuses um, that you wanted to look at uh, related to other the services dealing with people? Okay, so um, Lynn, I'm gonna ask you, have I omitted something on this agenda? Um, I've got too many papers on my desk right now. I don't know where it is. I want to wait until after we have the retreat to see what other things emerge there. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we've got the date. Did we in fact submit to you our ideas or has that deadline passed? I have not even called for them. I've been too busy trying to set up the committee meetings for the first okay. standing committees. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'm just emerging from a most intense week-long course where I was working 15-hour days for like you know, five days in a row. Oh. Um, it was not work of a full semester in one week. Seriously, yeah. I'm not going to do that one again. But I did learn a lot. I learned a lot. Um, okay, yeah. so if, if, any Shalini issue? Has a, yeah. Yeah, Shalini. Yeah. I was going to also just mention that maybe something down the road, we could just do a review of town services and where we can improve and update processes and policies. And along with that, I was thinking like even fees that we've been charging uh, for mm -hmm. certain services where, you know, the residents may be disadvantaged and or like, I mean, just kind of review that do certain mm -hmm. fees need to be uh, updated with our current, you know, we're still charging certain fees that might need to be increased or decreased or and then just review the town services and I think that's something along with and I really like what Anika said it was so specific around specific populations that are mm -hmm. underserved or ignored and really paying attention to um, the delivery of services around those. Okay, um, Anna. I was just going to ask Dorothy to clarify your question to Lynn. Were you asking if there was anything on the discussion items or anything on the regular agenda? Um, I think I did the list of the business brought forward. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just wasn't sure. I didn't want to make. I wanted to make sure we weren't skipping the action items or anything like that. Oh, we have to do some um, appointments. I yep. believe and public comment and all the other. Thank you. Stuff. Because I don't. As I say, I don't. The paper is lost for me right now. Right. Can I add one so, more thing? Yes, go ahead. Shana. Now that we are talking about lists, and this is like, it feels so cool that we can add and make up our own list of what we are passionate about and interested in. But this is something that we have in different groups talked about renaming a park or not a street because a street is a whole new process, but renaming a park to honor our local African American and indigenous people, peoples and who lived um, locally. And that's something, yeah, that what my understanding was that when we rename a street, that's really complicated because it's maps and you have to change all of those things and get approval from the state, but maybe renaming uh, parks or buildings or something like that is something we can think about. Um, so I, I quickly ask Paul if that is in fact true, that it's easier to do a park than a street. Mm -hmm. Well, streets are more complicated because that a lot of people depend on it. The post office. There's a lot of people who get into naming streets and numbering streets. Actually, parks are different. Um, I don't know exactly what it takes to rename a park for, in this community, so we'd have to do some research on that. Okay. All right, and Andy. 
Yeah, I was just, uh, Shelley brought up the, the thing about fees and uh, just um, finance committee is also thinking about fees. And um, what mm -hmm. we have to recognize is a couple things. One is um, it's uh, either statute or regulation for the state that um, indicates that fees are supposed to be geared to the cost of providing the service and cannot exceed the cost of providing the services. But on the other side of that um, coin is that uh, fees are uh, an essential part of the revenue uh, pieces when we do that pie uh, of what is the revenue that comes to the town. Um, we have to make sure that we um, obtain fees to pay for services whenever possible. Um, a lot of that has to do with things like inspections and mm -hmm. uh, um, things of that nature. So it's, um, I just wanted to point out that it lives in several committees and that there, it's not a simple issue. Okay, that's a good point, Andy. Um, are, we, are we ready to move on to the appointments? Um, and I see we have Jones Library Building Committee and Elementary School Building Committee. And so Paul, uh, if you'd like to lead off on this. So, so these are pretty two very straightforward appointments because they are appointments that were recommended by the town council for appointment. So I'll, I forget mm -hmm. which one is first, but I'll do the Jones Library first. So the council voted at its meeting on January 3rd to recommend that I appoint town councilor Anika Lopes to the Jones Library Committee, and that's what I'm doing, and um, ask for your support of that appointment. Should we take a vote on that now? Do we need a formal vote, Paul? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. you do. So, uh, I, are we looking for a motion specifically? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Would you, Anna? Great. Yeah. So, I, I move we let, let me know if this is right, Athena, Paul, Lynn, whoever. Uh, I move we affirm Paul Bachelman's appointment of Anika Lopes to the Jones Library Building Committee. One it, are we affirming his or are we just straight up doing it? Recommending to the town council. Right. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. I recommend we aff affirm Anika Lopes's, Lopes's appointment to the Jones Library Building Committee upon the recommendation to Paul Bachman to the town council. Okay. And do we have a second for that? So I'll second it. Okay. Uh, shall I call the question? Uh, all those in favor of the appointment of a new You got to do a voice vote. One you by to, one. You have to do one roll call. One. Okay, roll call. Okay. Um, Shalini Balmil? Yes. Okay. Anika Lopes? Yes. Um, Anna um, Devlin Gautier? Yes. Andy Steinberg? Yes. And Dorothy Pam? Yes. Okay. All right, so that has been approved and you are formally, formally the um, member of the Jones Library Building Committee. Well, the council is uh, yeah. going to. Uh, we yeah, the council has to do it. Okay, so we're just recommending it to the council. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we have voted to recommend to the council that she be the Jones Library member on the building committee. Okay. Can I ask a technicality question? No. I had said it as we're affirming Paul's appointment. Is that correct, or are we just? Should I have just said that we are we are recommending because we're really Paul recommended. So or Paul appointed. So, sorry. Yeah. So the, the, the town manager is the appointing authority. Yeah. The town council has thirty days to approve, disapprove, or take no action. In which case, the appointment's automatically approved. So mm. you're recommending Recommend. the town council approve. Okay. This, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Just, yeah. No. That's it. Actually. And, and that's, you know, it's important to understand the roles of the of this. So you're a subcommittee of the town council in right. essence, and you have no authority in and of yourself unless right. it's been delegated to the council. So otherwise everything you do goes back to the council for, for, for action. Great. Okay. So we have a unanimous yeah. vote to recommend yep. to the town council that Anika Lopes be approved as a member of the Jones Library Building Committee. Then that the correct. president will put that on the agenda for Monday's meeting and okay. hopefully it'll go through. So I have the second um, 
a request is for um, the elementary school building committee. So we have two vacancies right now that I'm seeking to fill. One is for the town councilor position that was previously held by Steve Schreiber. And the council, as you recall, at its meeting on January 3rd, um, had suggested Alicia Walker, and that's who I am appointing for that. The other person is um, the town's procurement officer. Uh, if you may recall, Anthony Delaney had been the town's procurement officer and he was serving in that capacity on the elementary school building committee. We now have a replacement, Simone Cristofori, who I am appointing and subject to your approval uh, for, that, for that seat. So there's two appointments um, uh, for the elementary school building committee. Okay, so uh, would I entertain a motion to approve those two nominations, two, two appointments, two appointments. Would somebody like to make that motion? I move that we recommend to the full town council the appointment of Alicia Walker and Simone Cristofori to the elementary school building committee as per the recommendation of Paul Bachman. Okay. And do I have a second for that? Second. Yes, okay. So I call the question for a voice vote, okay. Uh, in reverse order, um, Andy Steinberg. Yes. Okay, Anna. Yes. Uh, Anika. Yes. And Shalini. Yes. And Dorothy. Yes. Okay. So we have a unanimous vote to support that position. Okay. To recommend it to the town council, Paul. One thing to note is the. Um, I believe Lynn, you can address this. If it's a unanimous vote of the. TSO committee, it goes on the consent agenda for the town council. So the town council doesn't have to vote it. If it's not a unanimous vote, then it goes, it, I believe it doesn't go on the consent agenda. Athena or Lynn can correct me if I'm wrong. That is correct. Okay. Okay, great. So now, um, is there something else on this formal agenda that we need to address tonight? Public comment. Public comment. Public comment. Thank you. Okay. Last I looked, we had. Um, uh, Tracy Zafian, uh, do, is there a, a desire to make public comment at this time? If so, raise your hand. And yes, raise. I see the hand up. Okay, so Athena, could you please admit her to the meeting? Dorothy, I think you might have to do the little preamble. Oh, okay, where is it? Okay. okay. In, unless she doesn't, I don't know. Okay, no, I do. Okay, right. here we go. Thank you. Public comment. Ask all people who would like to make public comment to raise their hands. Ah, okay. I see one person um, and the person resides in Amherst. So I read this part. Public comments on matters within the jurisdiction of the TSL committee. Okay. Residents are welcome to express their views for one to three minutes at the discretion of the TSO chair based upon the number of people who want to speak. TSO will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Um, I believe that is that has been now said. So we could go forward. Um, anything else that I should say? It, it's, it's good to read that because it's a good reminder to us as well as the public that this is not, we're not to sit and have a chat. Um, you should set a three minute limit. Yes, okay, a three minute limit. Oh, okay, is, was there a timer? <laughs> um, so anyway, my name is Tracy Zafian. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, I just wanted to you know, um, attend this meeting remotely as a member of the audience, just given that role and the, given the fact that um, the council are the keepers of the public way and many of the public way items come to TSO. I mean, the um, Transportation Advisory Committee, we also look at things outside of the public way. Mm -hmm. um, we have talked at our TAC meetings. We had one last week, or we had one two weeks ago, and we're having one this week as well as that. You know, at some point, if appropriate, we'd love to, um, we'd be available to attend and present our talk with the TSO, mm -hmm. I guess, agenda item. Um, I did want to just specifically, because you were talking about the carryover items, just mention the tax perspective on the North Pleasant Street project from Eastman to Pine Street. Mm -hmm. um, this project has been before the TAC for a number of years, and we've talked with it at length um, with Guilford Mooring. Um, and after it went to the council in July, um, the TSO, it was referred to the TSO, and the TSO referred it to the TAC for feedback. 
Um, so we did, um, at that time, we did two different site visits with um, Guilford Mooring to the site, and we looked at the detailed plans that engineering had drawn up. Um, and we do have some, so TSO had originally asked us for her feedback right away. You know, they, it was a very tight time frame, and then they realized mm -hmm. that they had many other pressing items. So they didn't get back to it. And so we had not yet submitted our feedback. Okay. Um, but we do have it prepared. So I guess I wanted to just see. Good. I'm um, just as you're thinking about this issue, whether we want to, you would still want our feedback or whether you kind of want to restart the whole process. I mean, one big piece with this um, section of North Pleasant Street is that one of the major property owners is UMass. Um, and UMass is also one of the major stakeholders because its students use that route so much. Um, <clears throat> my understanding from Guilford Mooring also was that there's currently no funding for the project. So that was one thing. Um, that was one reason perhaps that it wasn't advanced, you know, as quickly as some of the other items. Um, so that's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. A very informative. Um, and that would be very useful. Um, Okay, are we, have we completed the official business of this meeting? Yes, Shalini. I, I, and this is something maybe even for Lynn that when we make the announcement that uh, public comment um, in these committees and council isn't, we're not gonna engage in dialogue, but just encourage people to sign up for the district meeting uh, because that's where the dialogue does happen. And many people, I was surprised, still not surprised, but many people still don't know about it. So I, I suppose the more we just keep repeating it that, okay, we're not going to have dialogue in a public comment, but we encourage you to sign up for your district counselors, newsletters and meetings, because that's where you can have dialogue. Right. Good point. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to mention something totally random, but I thought it was interesting. Um, we have a new senior director of uh, senior services, and she worked at the Amherst Survival Center at some point in the past and has UMass connections. And we had uh, just two days ago, um, the uh, hostage situation at a um, Jewish center in Texas. And somebody tells me that the, the rabbi had worked at the survival center in the past. So I, I just thought that was kind of amazing that the survival center um, seems to be uh, a great source of service to the community, but also a place where leaders are trained. So just wanted to mention that. Um, okay, I will get back to you um, with uh, some of the choices and um, Anna is gonna help me with the doodle poll um, and hopefully we'll get ourselves a meeting date and um, your mm -hmm. comments are welcome during meetings and after meetings. So communicate with me. Uh, and let me mention that for your next agenda, there will be a very significant referral, assuming that's the way the council votes, coming off of the agenda on the 24th with regard to parking fees, et cetera. It's just, it's a, it's a quite a significant presentation. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So I guess then that the meeting, um, the meeting is adjourned. And I gather that is non-debatable. Okay. And it's 7.55. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Thanks, y'all. Thank, Thank, Thank you all of you, please. Thank you. Okay.